by the time I finish eating this jello pudding cup, hopefully we'll get through everything we need to get through in this video. So I think the Lumix S5 II, hands down, one of the best cameras that's been released in the last two, five years, who knows? How long has it really been since that thing came out, huh? You don't need me to tell you why this camera is so damn good. 6K open gate recording internally, ProRes recording internally, phase detect autofocus, class leading in body image stabilization, B-RAW over HDMI, ProRes RAW over HDMI, and it's like 2,200 bucks or something like that. But now they have a new firmware for this camera. So a great camera is about to become excellent. Now I've had this firmware for about a week, but unfortunately I got sick, so I didn't get a whole lot of time to really play with this thing. So I'm gonna spark notes what I have had time to play with and what I think is really great about this new firmware update. Improved autofocus. This has been the one thing that I've had a little bit of an issue with on the Lumix systems, even with the phase detect. I don't think it's quite on par with what I'm used to with my Sony cameras, but for the price and because of all the other features that this camera offers, I have never said don't buy this because of autofocus. I do think it is more than good enough for the vast majority of users that are gonna buy this camera. And in my limited testing of the new firmware, it seems to be just a little bit better. It's just a little bit snappier. It sticks a little bit more than it used to. And honestly, I have to spend more time with it, but I'll just say overall, I don't think you can have any complaints about the phase detect on this camera. Just don't expect it to be as good as something like a Sony. I have to be fully transparent about that. I just don't think it's still at that level, but it's getting there. And you know what? I've said this in other videos about Lumix. It's good that they're improving it because the more we play with it and the more creators like myself who are playing and testing this stuff, tell them what it needs to be, they listen. So I'm gonna give them feedback the more I test this firmware out and hopefully in the next version, it'll be even better. Starting to run a little low on pudding. Next big update is improved in-body image stabilization. And I know what you're thinking, how could it possibly get any better? This camera is already probably the best IBIS I've ever used outside of like a GH6 or GH5. When you use a modern Lumix camera, the IBIS, it makes every other IBIS system feel completely obsolete. It's not even a contest, okay? And now with this new IBIS system, they fix a little bit of the warping that sort of happened on wide angle lenses. You can see it in my Japan video when that Lumix S5 just first came out. A lot of the corners were warping when I was using that 18 mil. I did test this out with the 20 mil and I'm not seeing any of that warping. They've also added a new high e-boost mode. So this thing basically means it's gonna do some digital stabilization on top of the IBIS. Now it has always amazed me that they are able to get such great IBIS out of a full frame camera like this because not even the Sony FX30, which has probably the best IBIS of any of the Sony systems I've used, comes even close to the S5 II. Again, Something great about this camera is getting excellent. Okay, this next addition to the firmware is kind of a quality of life for workflow update. Now you have internal proxies. So you can record in your 4K, your 6K open gate, whatever you want. You're gonna get a nice HD 1080p proxy file, which is a lot lighter and easier on your machine, especially if you're working with multiple editors or you're doing some sort of cloud thing, which we'll get to more of in a second. But it's nice to have internal proxies. They're gonna record to your second SD slot, so you get all of your normal 4K or 6K, whatever it is you're recording, as well as three flavors of proxy. Those proxies are gonna come in handy because the next big thing they've added, and this is huge, this is one of those things where on paper I was like, eh, whatever, I don't really use all that stuff all that much. And then I played with it and I was like, this is actually a game changer. These cameras now have Frame.io built into the camera itself, which means you can just connect to Wi-Fi, start snapping pictures, and they upload immediately to your Frame.io project. The best way to explain this Frame.io stuff is obviously my camera's wireless. I don't have anything connected to anything. I have Frame.io already running. I have done the whole wireless setup. I'm gonna record a clip real quick. Bop, 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 and done. It's gonna say new file added real quick here. Boom. And that's what I just shot. So that's the proxy file that's now going up to Frame.io. And of course I still have my 4K full you know, resolution and bitrate, all that stuff on here. But if I had an editor, literally anywhere in the world, I could have them cutting stuff that I'm shooting literally as I'm shooting it. That's nuts. Some of you might've checked out there and thought, well, I don't have a team. I'm not working with other people that need this footage. Even if you're solo, this is where I'm thinking about it. If I'm on set and I'm shooting with a client, I'm gonna turn this on, have my laptop on Wi-Fi, so I know as I'm taking pictures, the RAWs or the JPEGs 
are immediately getting backed up to the cloud on my computer. So if something happens to that SD card, something happens, whatever it is, I lose the camera, I know that stuff is like immediately backed up. That's amazing. A lot of clients just want footage right away too because they're gonna do their own edits. A lot of my social media clients just want the vertical stuff ready to go. So I'll just have those proxies uploading as we shoot and they'll have video ready to go to cut their Instagram reels, whatever it is they wanna do with it. I really do think this is a great, great solution for content creators and productions from across the map. Now, all these things are amazing. One of the best things about Lumix though and these Lumix cameras, if you get into this ecosystem, is just how quickly they update things. How long did it take Sony to do that A7S III update? Like three years, almost four years to get that updated with like table stake stuff that they were putting in other cameras. I don't think any camera manufacturer owes you anything in a firmware update, but we have come to expect from Lumix that they will listen to us if we make us think about something. They're out there and they're listening. And that to me is part of what makes a great camera community is a manufacturer that listens to its users. How long do you think people have been arguing and yelling about getting shutter angle in an FX3? I had shutter angle in my GH4. I almost forgot about my pudding. I think this is my last little scoop here. There's so much stuff in this firmware. I couldn't get into all of it. I apologize I got sick. I would have loved to play with this longer, but you can go get it soon. There's a link in the description with all the information on the firmware. I'm gonna put the date of when it's available up on screen because I legitimately can't remember it right now. But shit, these are damn good cameras that just keep getting better and better. And honestly, like I always say, nothing to complain about. There's a couple little scraps in here still. And I'll have a little scoop. If you have any questions about the S52 firmware update, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, yeah.